praise the Lord. All the time. Amen. And good morning, good morning. Good it's morning. It's good to see all of you this morning over television. We welcome you to our Amen. program, Handfuls of Purpose. I am Pastor Brad Wright, and this is my wife and co-pastor Michelle here at His Life Ministries. It's nice praise to be with you this morning. Amen. There's nothing like studying the Word of God, starting your day out, um, seeking the Lord. The Bible says to seek Him early. Yes, and He shall be found. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's dive into the Word this morning. Amen. Amen. Last week, we talked about um, when Jesus said that He'll give life and life more abundantly. Amen. And, and if we don't understand how to have that more abundant life, we talked um, about Romans 7 and how the Apostle Paul even himself failed when... Um, when we don't have our faith placed correctly in the blood of Jesus Christ. Miserable Christian experience, amen. And it is. So there's there's, there's two, op there's, that's the opposites there. Abundant life and miserable Christian experience, amen. And we brought to you how that you could receive abundant life, amen. And in our hopes this morning is to bring a little bit more of how you can have that victory. Amen. And, and many believers, they find themselves in Romans 7 struggling and they find themselves where they are sinning and then confessing and then re, uh, repenting and then sinning, confessing, repenting, sinning, confessing, repenting. And they find themselves in a lifestyle to where they are continually just sinning, confessing, it repenting. Wears them out. And, and, and it, it, it makes Christians burn out. It, it makes them you know, want to give up. Yes. And, 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 we've, and it's called a miserable Christian life in Romans 7, living a Romans 7 lifestyle. Yes. And, and our goal this morning is to get you who are in Romans 7 and get you into Romans 6. Yes. Because yes. Romans 6 gives us the key of how we have more abundant life. Um, Romans 6, I believe, is probably the greatest chapter in the New Testament on telling us how to be separated from sin and living a holy and righteous life. It's like the Magna Carta yes. of the New Testament. If you don't understand Romans 6, you're not going to live in victory. You're not going to receive, understand abundant right. life. Amen. If, if we don't understand Romans 6, the Christian will, not maybe, will find himself yes. in Romans 7 and staying there until the believer understands Romans 6. That's right. And so let's, this morning, let's get into Romans 6 and, and do an expository teaching this morning on because it's important. Um, and let's just start in verse 1. Honey, go ahead and read verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now let's stop right there. This is the greatest question that believers have. You know, they're living a Romans 7 lifestyle where they're sinning, confessing, repenting, and they, they, they're struggling. They have bondages. They don't understand how to get out of them. And many Christians just get to the point, well, you know, grace is greater than sin, but unfortunately, I don't know how to have victory over this thing. So I might as well just enjoy my sins and know that Jesus died yeah, for me. Yeah, they turn to preachers who are preaching that you can live any way you want because grace is greater mm -hmm. than sin and that's wrong. It's a license to sin and right. antinomianism and it's wrong. It is because the Lord gives the answer in verse 2. Mm -hmm. So let's read verse 1 again. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You know, and many people think just because grace is greater than sin, does that mean I have a license to sin? I can go out and do whatever I want and the grace of God will cover it? Well, the Lord gives the answer right here in verse 2. Mm -hmm. It's not a maybe. It's not, well, I don't know. It's not, well, just do whatever. It's a blunt answer. The Lord here in His Word says, God forbid. forbid. And that's a strong statement. God forbid. Mm -hmm. You know, being under grace does not give us a license to sin. It doesn't give us an excuse to stay in our sins. It doesn't give us a reason not to seek for the answer and just say, well, I'm good enough the way I am. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord says here in verse 2, God forbid. The, the grace of God gives us the power and the help of the Holy Spirit to be free Walk in victory. From sin. Amen. You see, the Lord loves you and me. Jesus loves you. But we have to understand this. Jesus doesn't love us for who we are. 
He loves us despite what we are. Yes. That's why He came. While we were yet sinners, He loved us enough and came and died at Calvary's cross despite what we have done. Amen. The Lord loves you despite who we are. Yes. And the Lord doesn't want you to stay in your sins. No. The Lord doesn't want you to give excuses for your sins. The Lord wants to set you free from your sins. And I'm talking to you as believers. Because many believers, they, they use the grace of God as a license to sin, and that's, that's not right. The Lord says, God forbid. And it doesn't give us an excuse to stay in our sins. God wants to set you free. That's why you're tuning into this program this morning. The Lord has directed you here because He wants you to know that you can have victory over this thing that's bothering you. I don't know what your bondage is, but the Lord knows. And this is why you're tuning in this morning. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the question is asked in verse 2, how shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay, so this is the question believers have. You know, if, if we're not to use grace as a license to sin, then how, how are we going to be dead to sin? How are we going to, how do we live victory? How do we, give us the answer. This is what the Lord's saying. This is what Paul's asking. Okay, give me the answer. How am I supposed to live holy and righteous? What am I supposed to do? Because mm -hmm. in Romans 7, we see everything else that like Paul asked, who shall deliver me? And in order for you to fully understand what this is saying, how shall we be dead to sin, you need to understand that this, the entirety of the book of Romans, chapter 6, isn't referring to other than I believe it is in one place, um, I believe 6, but it's not talking about acts of sin, but rather the sin nature. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to understand what that means to be dead to sin, if you're not being dead to acts of sin, well, acts of sin are going to be the result of this sin nature that's inside of each and every single one of us being active in our life. Before you got saved, the sin nature was fully dominating your life, your heart and your mind. You did the things that were bad and you didn't really feel bad about it. You might have had a conscience because God's given us a conscience and creation to show us that there is a God and that evil is evil. But you, you enjoyed doing the things that you did before. Now that God has come in and the will has been changed and now you find yourself doing those things which you hate, you don't like that. It, it, it grieves the heart. It makes you feel miserable. And just as Brad said, you're confessing, repenting. You know, you're, it's this cycle that's occurring. But you need to truly understand when you were born again, before that, before that wonderful experience, the sin nature dominated your life. And the human nature was a part of your nature. You were born with two natures. Amen. Amen. When, when God created mankind, he created Adam and Eve with a human nature. Yes. And your human nature is what makes you you. You get hungry, you get tired. When you get hungry, when you get tired, you know, um, for some of you, your favorite color is blue. Yes. Um, it's human nature for a man not to be uh, want to be alone, but to have a spouse. That's human nature. Yes. Uh, but when man fell in the garden 6,000 years ago, man was introduced and um, was... And, and had what was then given to him, which is called the sin nature. The internet to me. Which yes. is intertwined now with your human nature, all who are born after the likeness of Adam, which are you and me. So everyone after Adam and Eve now are born with a sin nature and a human nature. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the sin nature is really the nature of Satan, yes. which goes against everything that the Word of God says is right and good. Yes. That's why, as my wife was explaining, as a sinner, before you knew Christ, you loved to do all the things that go against the Word of God. You hated church, you hated prayer, you hated the name of Jesus. That was the sin nature working in you and, and, and pumping the desires of Satan into your spirit, soul, and body. But when you came to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith and the Holy Spirit came in, you was given a new nature. A new life. Amen. Which is yes. the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, which is called divine nature which is the nature of God. Yes. And the minute you got saved, that sin nature was broken. It was unplugged. Yes. It wasn't removed. That's right. But it was unplugged to where it couldn't have dominion over you. And the sin and the divine nature now of God was plugged in and you find the things of God filtering into your spirit, soul and body. That's why 
um, when you got born again, it was those desires coming into your heart for the first time. That's why you loved the name of Jesus. That's why you wanted to go to church. That's why you wanted to read your word. And, 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 and if we understand the blood of Jesus Christ, that divine nature will continually work in your heart and life. Yes. Um, and that sin nature will remain dormant in your life. Yes. Just as Pastor Brad said, the sin nature is now unplugged. If you think of a fan, if I had a fan sitting here right now, before salvation, that fan would be plugged in and I'd turn it on and that fan would just blow and blow and blow. And if I, the moment I got saved, if you think about that fan being unplugged and you go to turn it on, it ain't blowing anymore. It's not blowing anything into your heart and life anymore. The sin nature is unplugged, okay? The sin nature of the fan would still be here. Okay? The outlet's still there. The ability for it to be plugged back in and just start blowing that stuff back in my heart and life mm -hmm. is still there. But our relationship to that fan is now different because right. it's not plugged into us anymore. Right. But now the divine nature is plugged into us. You think of another fan, and it's blowing the good stuff into us. You know, It's bringing in the, good, the heart and the desire towards the things of God. Amen. And that's what we talked about last week because yes. if we misplace our faith, what will happen <coughs> is the sin nature, this nature that still dwells in you that's supposed to be dormant and that relationship is supposed to be broken, will slowly start to revive. And as that sin nature starts slowly reviving and start putting the desires of Satan back in your heart yes. and life, you find the acts of sin becoming more and more um, um, progressive. Yes. And, and that's where many Christians are. They have their faith misplaced. And the sin nature, which is supposed to be dormant in the believer's life, starts reviving and starts causing us problems. Right. And they don't understand this, and they don't know how to make the sin nature um, be dead in their life again. And, and, and that's where the cross of Christ and the message of the cross comes into play. And that's what Romans 6 really teaches us, how to right. keep the sin nature dormant and from giving us problems. Yes, and as he said, it's faith that's placed properly, because I'll jump ahead here to Romans 8 too. You don't have to turn there, but it says, for the spirit of life, that's that life, that the divine nature, in Christ Jesus, meaning in faith in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's that wages of set death. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's made us free. That's talking about a proper faith. That's causing the Holy Spirit, that divine nature, to begin to work in you. Amen. It's a spiritual law that makes Romans 6 make more sense. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's read verse 3 and let's see where our answer lies for this sin nature. Because in Romans chapter 6, the word sin refers to it every single time with a definite article. The sin nature. Yes. And we want to understand how to keep this sin nature dormant so it doesn't cause the believer problems to where acts of sin are being manifested and, and dominating your life. In Romans chapter 3, here's the answer for everything. He says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism <laughs> into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. These scriptures hold the key. Yes. Now this word baptism in the Greek is baptismo, but it's not speaking of water baptism. No. This is not talking about your water baptism. This is talking about your spiritual baptism into Christ. How you got saved. Born again. When you got born again, you was baptized into Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. And what the Holy Spirit is saying here in Romans chapter 6 verse 3, that the same faith and grace in the blood of Jesus Christ that saved you is the same faith and grace, the blood of Jesus Christ, that keeps the believer set free and keeps yes. this sin nature dormant. Amen. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, that the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Amen. That all speaks of what happened there at the cross. Amen. We were crucified. That old man, that old 
Pastor Brad, that old Sister Michelle, was crucified, meaning we were mm -hmm. baptized and placed in inside of Jesus Christ there at the cross in the mind of the Father. And, and our old self was, in our sins, were crucified with Christ. Amen. We were buried with Christ by baptism into death. Amen. And like as Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father, we were raised up. So the sin nature was completely Amen. unplugged. Amen. The sin nature is not completely destroyed until the rapture. Amen. Amen. But when the corruptible shall put on incorruption, amen. But the sin nature at that moment of baptism into Christ, because Christ was born of a human nature but not a sin nature, amen. He was able to bear the sin penalty of the entirety of the world. So the moment we were placed in him, the sin nature then was unplugged. We were back, we were buried with him. Our sins were buried, forgotten as far as the east is from the west. And just like Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father. We were raised up to live in Him and through Him through a new power source, which is the cross, so that the Holy Spirit can come and bring that resurrection life, abundant life, to us on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. I like to put it this way. In verse 3, he says, Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. I believe the Holy Spirit is saying this, is what he's trying to make known to believers. Don't you know that what Jesus did at the cross not only paid the penalty of sin, yes. but his death broke the power of sin in your life as well? Yes. And, and, and those, that's a strong statement because the cross is what paid for it all. It's yeah. what not only paid the penalty of the sin so you could go to heaven, but it also broke the power of of sin, so yes. you could live a holy and righteous life by faith. Here in Romans nature. chapter 6, the Bible tells us that if we place our faith in what Christ has done at the cross, knowing that his death broke the power of sin, broke the power of the sin nature, we will find resurrection oh, life. Yes, the divine nature will be flowing freely in our the Bible, lives. The Bible tells us that we... That, that we're not that our old man isn't to be rehabilitated. No. You ain't gonna find resurrection life in a rehabilitated life. The definition of resurrection is one who is alive from, from the, the dead. dead. A living sacrifice. And when we yes. place our faith in what Christ has done at the cross, we are crucified with him, we are buried with him, we are risen with him to newness of life. And that sin nature is put to death to where sin yes. shall not have dominion. Over you, And if we place our faith in that precious blood, if we place our faith knowing what his death has done, mm -hmm. we are guaranteed the help of the Holy Spirit and we will find resurrection life. He says that in verse 5. He says, for if we've been planted together, if we've been planted, if we've been rooted, if we've been grounded in the likeness of his death, meaning understanding and knowing that his death has paid for it all. Yes. He says, you shall also, then and only then, will you find resurrection, life, and power going to work. Amen. And now, Pastor Bradley, I know some, some may be watching and saying, well, I've been doing that. But I don't see this thing um, leaving. It's not, it's not going as quick. Like I see my, my brother over here who was struggling with this and and the cross works for him, but it doesn't seem to be working for me, Pastor Brad. Mm -hmm. The cross always works. Yes. Um, the problem is with us. And we have to understand as well, this is, you know, being separated from sin, which is called the sanctification process, it's a progressive work. Yes. You know, when I got saved, alcohol immediately fell off. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to struggle with it. I never had a problem with it ever again. But you know what? As a believer... As I started moving forward, I had a bondage of nicotine. Yes. And that thing didn't fall off in instantly. I had to learn to apply faith that the blood of Jesus Christ broke the power of nicotine in my life. Yes. And as I continually evidenced faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, I found that, that bondage diminishing slowly over time to where I eventually got the victory over it through Christ Jesus. Yes, amen. It didn't just fall kept submitting it. Right, it didn't fall off right away, but, you know, <clears throat> faith in the cross doesn't mean, you know, we repeat a certain slogan or we have our faith in a wooden beam. We just know in the depth of our heart from the moment we wake up until we lay our head on our pillow to go to sleep that the grace of God can give us victory because of 
what Jesus has done at the cross, shedding his blood. And we just believe that in the depth of our heart. And, 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 on. and that's why Jesus said, take up your cross daily. He doesn't, he's not meaning to say that we have to go around pretending to suffer, saying, oh, woe is me. No, we just realize Recognize that our, our victory was won through his blood. And when we understand that and believe that and are planted in that, in the depth of the soul of our heart, and we realize that's how grace works, that's how the Holy Spirit works, the, the Holy Spirit goes to work and we find the power of sin slowly starting to diminish. We see the body just slowly starting to be whittled away. Just like if you took a knife on a twig and started whittling the, mm -hmm. the, the wood away. I mean, mm -hmm. we see sin starting to be whittled away slowly over time every day as we evidence faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Knowing who he is and what he's done. And we find the grace of God going to work in our hearts and lives. Yes. We find resurrection, life, and power bringing the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, yes. and every good thing that yes. comes along with That's serving right. the Lord. And the thing that is that you're responsible for is that denial of self. And that repentance, which is a turning away from that thing. You know, that's why the Bible here says to reckon yourselves dead indeed unto sin. You've got to recognize when that thing comes at you, you have to reckon yourself dead to that thing. That relationship and its power over you has been broken. And you have to apply it to your life. At that moment of temptation, at that moment of desire, he's changing the will. He's changing the desires. He wants to give you the power to perform that which is good that, that before you may not have found, but now you've found the truth. You know the truth. This, the power of this thing over your life, it's already been broken. Now you've got to walk in the victory. It's not word of faith. It's not grabbing it and claiming it. It's saying, I'm reckoning myself every day. I'm denying my own desire for this thing, my own desire for that thing. I'm denying that, taking up the cross what's occurred there and I'm going to follow Jesus. It's not going to happen like Pastor Brad said overnight. This is You're going to have to continue. If that's why he said daily. Mm -hmm. Deny yourself daily. If we place our faith daily in the blood. Yes. Um, some mm -hmm. things they do instantly fall off just like yeah. that. But other things, God's going to allow us to be tested to see if we'll trust his redemption plan every day for the power of sin and that bondage yes. to be not dominant in our life. And you will, you will see the Lord working and you will see that yes. bondage slowly starting to diminish. Amen. And you made a good point. You know, true temptation is not whether do I commit this act of sin or don't I commit this act of sin. The true temptation is how do I approach this bondage? Yes. Do I look to what I'm going to do to try to get victory over this? Or do yes. I look to the grace of God knowing that Christ has already given me the victory through his yes. blood? That is where the true temptation yes. is. Yes. That's where the true temptation and the choice is. Your choice isn't, you know, do I fulfill this act of sin or don't I fulfill this act of sin? Your true choice is, do I approach this through the blood of Jesus Christ by faith and grace? Or do I try to take this into my own hands and do it myself? Yes. That's the true choice. And if we try to do it ourselves, we will find ourselves failing. We will find sin reviving. But right. if we approach every bondage and every um, thing that comes against us, knowing that Christ has already done yes. it at Calvary's cross. Now, this doesn't mean sinless perfection. Amen. Because we're still in this fallen flesh, and we are going to fail at times. But the Bible does promise us sin shall not have yes, dominion right. over you. And, and 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 the Lord doesn't. It's not like baseball, where three strikes and you're out. Amen. God, as long as you confess your sin and you get back up to bat and, and turn place your, from your sin. and turn from your sin and place your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lord will let you come up to the plate once again. Yes, He will. So that you can learn how to have victory over this bondage through the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, that's that sin factory, might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve the sin nature. For he who is dead is free from the sin nature. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. Amen. Knowing that Christ being dead, raised from the dead dies no more, and death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died once unto the sin nature, once, but in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, reckon, meaning account, your also, you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto the sin nature, 
but alive unto God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and the Lord shows us here that if we place our faith in what Jesus has done at Calvary's cross, mm -hmm. by the grace of God, he will put those things to death yes. in our heart and life. And we will find ourselves dead to the old man. We can't yes. crucify ourselves. We have to be crucified with Christ. And the yeah. only way that can happen is just as we said in verse 5. If we are planted, if we place our faith in what Jesus has done at Calvary's cross, yes. we will find the old man being crucified by the grace of God. We will find um, the desire, those old desires being crucified, put to death. And we will find ourselves dead, our relationship to the sin nature being dead and broken yes. to where we will have life through Jesus Christ, and we will have life more abundantly. We will find that resurrection yes. life and power. Not because we put ourselves to death, but because we have accepted what Christ has already done by faith, yes. and by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit has put those things to death, where sin does not have dominion over you, because you have been dead, and you are not no longer serving the sin nature, because that relationship with the sin nature has been totally and completely broken. Yes, amen. And when Pastor Bradley talks about our faith being placed in the cross, or the victory of the cross, he's not speaking of a head knowledge, just a recognition in your mind. He's talking also about heart knowledge, mm -hmm. which we know it has to get from our minds to our heart to our feet. Mm -hmm. So we're also talking about an applicable knowledge, right. an applicable faith. Right. So just like Jesus said, deny self, take up your cross and follow him. Faith in the cross is referring to believing in the mind, believing in the heart, and walking with the feet. So if you believe with your heart that Jesus Christ died for you and that you were buried with him and he broke the power of the sin nature over you, you will walk in victory. Amen. That'll be the result. You will walk in victory. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is correct. Amen. Yes. It, you know, everything focused, everything should be centered around the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as you said, when we say your faith has to be in the cross, we're not talking about placing your faith in a wooden beam. You can find a literal piece of the original cross that Jesus yes. died on, and it has no power. Amen. It's what the Son of God, Jesus, did there at that cross when he shed his blood. Yeah. I like to put it this way. When I say the words Pearl Harbor, many people think of the event of World War II when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Or when I say the words Twin Towers, we think of 9-11 and everything that had happened there. It's talking, we're, when we say the cross, we're talking about the event that happened there. When Jesus Christ came, the Son of God, who was sinless, and went to the cross and shed his blood so that our sins could be paid, the penalty could be paid, the power of sin could be broken, and every single benefit by giving the Holy Spirit um, could be given to us. Amen. Amen. And that's where your answer is. Yes. Your answer is in the cross. It doesn't matter what the problem is, the answer is always the same. That's right. The blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Amen. Mm -hmm. He Amen. is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And it's because of what he's done at the cross that makes him the way, the truth, and the life. Because he is the one that loved you enough that he went to the cross and died for you. So that the penalty, be, the penalty could be paid and the power of sin could be broken. Amen. Amen. And that's all the time we have for today. God bless you. Jesus loves you.